feel compassion. I feel empathy and I feel somewhat bad for people. And if anything, it puts my lowly issues into really big perspective when you look at this story, courtesy of the music worldwide, which is absolutely wild. It says Spotify slash 500 jobs worldwide as Dawn Ostroff exit streaming platform. And if you don't know who Dawn Ostroff is, she's very prominent in Spotify. I think she might have been there since 2018. I haven't read the article yet. I'm going to read it now. But just going off memory, I'm pretty sure she was there around 2018, 2017. She spearheaded a lot of the Spotify acquisition of podcast. She may have been in the team or responsible for Joe Rogan actually signing on. But I remember she was part of that whole slew of podcasts that first came about in terms of the Joe Budden podcast, if you remember that, when they had an exclusivity deal with them on the platform. She was also, I think, the person that Joe Budden fell out with actually in the company because he felt like Spotify didn't value his podcast, which eventually led to that podcast breaking up and then the original cast members kind of splintering off into doing a new Rory Moore show, blah, 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 blah. So she's a very prominent figure in Spotify. And 500 people people in spotify is a lot of people also considering you know they've got a, a, a probably an employee base of like nine to eight hundred people no sorry nine to nine thousand to eight thousand to nine hundred people you would assume or nine thousand people so five hundred people is a lot of jobs across the sector so it's somebody that's prominent and as big and as kind of well regarded and respected in her industry as dawn ostrov this lady is like 60 70 years old much you know a lot of experience in the field been working at spotify 2018 have got actual w's in her flipping cv that she can go back to and say what she's done and whatnot if she's been let go also why do i think mr lowly ops marketing social media manager community manager guy cs and customer service guy like me why should i expect to be treated anything any differently why should i expect that let's read the article regardless it says here spotify has announced today january 25th that it is um the process of slashing over 500 jobs worldwide the firm confirmed to the se sec filing sorry that it's reducing employees based by about six percent across the company in the same filing spotify confirmed that dawn ostrov chief content and advertising business officer that's a hell of a title in it chief content and advertising business officer is set to lead the company too i love that because she's higher up they can't say they fired her because it's going to look bad in the cv so someone like that in that position you usually get a heads up that you should probably put in your notice i know that happened to me prior when i used to work in retail and i came late too many times and the manager liked me is like hey man we're gonna have to let you go but if you just put your resignation in it won't go out, it won't appear in your file so if someone wants to if you want to put me on a list as a flipping um what's that thing called as a reference i can give it without really revealing what happened do you know what i mean so that was something that people do. So I'd imagine on my lowly level as being a flipping sales assistant on the shop floor, I'd imagine it kind of, if it's it's funny that it reflects itself from the shop floor to the C-suite. It continues, Miss Ostroff will assume the role of senior advisor to the company to help facilitate a transaction, transition, sorry, which is funny. You get fired, but you still have to do handovers. Um, Spotify also announced that as part of the reorganization, Alex Nostrom, currently Chief Freemium Business Officer, another good title, and Gustav Soderstorm, currently Chief Research and development officer will each take additional responsibilities to be appointed co-president of the company which is always annoying in these kind of companies right not only do people get fired and let go especially during mass firing so you know it's, it's kind of a bit of it's a bit destabilizing it maybe it's a little bit um, nerve-wracking as well if you're if you survive because on one hand you're grateful they still have a job and you can still pay your rent and go on holiday that you plan and booked and you can still buy people christmas presents without feeling like you're on the cusp of poverty right all those things are really good but then the other side you start thinking damn now you're gonna take more responsibility because all those jobs that people had and they were doing and they were doing them pretty well there's still jobs that need to get done but they don't need to have a dedicated person so they're gonna siphon off a few of the bits and pieces that they did onto your plate and if you're already busy and overworked and stressed out you're going to be even more you know overworked and stressed out now that your colleagues have gone so you kind of have to suffer a double you have to suffer double because you leave colleagues and friends and also suffer double because you're going to have more workload mad um, it continues at the end of Q3 2022, according to an investor presentation, Spotify employed 9,808 full time employees globally. 6% of 9,800 is 588. God damn, it's a lot of people. Spotify said that in the SEC filing today that the head count reduction would incur approximately 35 to 45 million in severance related packages or charges. Jesus Christos. Because every one of those people is going to have severance, especially if it's a European country. They're going to be pretty good in terms of the packages they give people. 
Um, most people probably been working there a year plus. So I think if every year that you work full time, I'm pretty sure it's happened in the UK, um, counts for like a month of severance. So you can just imagine the amount of money they're giving people. And you imagine also if someone like a Dawn Ostroff is getting let go, this mass layoffs is affecting people across the entire company in de different levels of seniority. So people that have been working there seven years, 10 years, you know, big manager types and whatever it may be. So those packages are going to be big. It's going to be anywhere between like a thousand pounds per month. You're incurring fees up to 10,000, maybe even more madness in a letter issued to staff today spotify's co-founder daniel eck wrote the following over the next several hours one-on-one -on -one conversations will take place with the impacted employees which are never good in companies you know very rarely do you have one-on-one -on -one conversations where someone tells you you're doing a good job keep it going push even more you've raised the standard you've been a great addition to the team one-on-one -on -one conversations are only to kind of you know pull your card slap you around the face, tell you to wake up, tell you the last warning, remind you of the standards, remind you of your responsibility, scare you. Like, that's what they're mainly there for. They're never there to praise you or to give you words of encouragement. Very, very rarely. Um, he said, um, to offer some perspective on why we're making this decision, in 2022, the growth of Spotify's OPEX outpaced our revenue growth by 2x. That would have been unsustainable long-term in any climate, but with the challenging macro environment, that would have been more difficult to close the gap than your ex said. And he also said, as you are all well aware, over the last few months, we've made considerable effort to rein in costs, but it simply hasn't been enough. So while it's clear its path is right for Spotify, it doesn't make it easier, especially as we think about the contributions of these colleagues have made. If, if it doesn't make it easier, why didn't you fall on your sword, eh? It's funny how these mass firings work out, isn't it? Leaderships are never people, leadership people like Daniel Eck are never the ones to leave. It's always the ones that he kind of delegates the task to, so that he's kind of underlings, he kind of lets go. But really and truly, if you haven't done a good job in terms of making Spotify somewhat financially stable or put in a position where they're not having to incur mass layoffs, it could be argued that maybe you as a head, you should be let go. It's kind of the opposite of football teams. It's like in business world, they fire the employees to save the company. But in football world, they always fire the head, the managers and the chairman or the director of football. Or sometimes the owners will get let go before they let go of the players. Always that way. Um, which is quite interesting. But I guess in football, the players are far more valuable than little old me, social media managers. You know what I mean? They can find many of us, you know, you throw a flipping stone in shortage and you'll stumble across somebody who knows how to flip in, put together a content calendar. It's not too difficult. But one person I do feel bad for, I'm just remembering it now, actually, talking about Spotify. I do remember a couple of years ago, some girl, I think it may have been a girl on Twitter, went viral for wanting, for so basically publicly declaring that she wanted to join Spotify. I think this might have been during the pandemic, I'm pretty sure. And she put together a pretty sick CV in the style of Spotify's UX, UI. I guess she was a designer, I'm pretty sure. And um, it went viral and everyone was sharing. Oh my God, look how great she's done this. And then I think she was already applying for Spotify anyway. But then they basically fast-tracked her employment, uh, sorry, her application. And then she announced on Twitter, oh my God, I got my job, doing dream job. I went to Spotify all this time, blah, blah, blah. And everyone was happy for her. And then I think I saw recently a post where she kind of retweeted that comment that she made with the Spotify themed CV and said, oh, I've been let go. I'm crushed. Like, you know I mean, like, absolutely broken. And considering I'm going through the same thing, I think in days gone by, I would have been happy and gleeful that everybody else is suffering while I'm suffering. But I can't help but feel sorry for people, do you know what I mean? In this kind of level, going through what they've gone through. And it also makes me wonder, what would I have, what would I have preferred or what would most people prefer? getting let go before christmas which is the end of q4 or getting let go as you come into q1 at the beginning of the year so getting let go before christmas you're looking forward to the holidays you maybe haven't bought your presents yet you're getting those kind of things sorted out you might have to go visit family in far-flung places or bring gifts or just spend money during christmas like people do because it's christmas people get a bit free with the wallet or you rather get fired in the new year when you're trying to plan a new year, you are put together some new, new year's resolutions, you're trying to focus on things that you want to do in your career, you've got all these plans and goals in place, and then boom, you get hit with the hammer of, of being laid off. What would you prefer, before Christmas or after Christmas? Because I don't really know. Because I thought my, mine was like te technically before Christmas, um, but it all got kind of finalized the end of this month, and it's kind of feeling a little bit weird. But I think I prefer it the quicker the, the quicker they get it done, the better. Just as soon as the owners find out, I think it's best they communicate. People say, hey, this is what the situation is. We let people go so that you can start adjusting uh, mentally, physically, practically and whatnot going forward. But one thing I have to say is really valuable in these situations. I think I've seen it on both ends, the good and the bad. 
in this situation, it was handled pretty well, I think, because I think as Daniel Eck mentioned in his article, you know, they tried everything in order to make it work and it didn't work. And same happened with my company. I saw the manager, sorry, I saw the owner like legitimately wither away in front of our eyes. His eyes, you know, the bags under his eyes became more prominent. He had more hollow, buco, fat cheeked look to him. He was pacing up and down, always on the phone, always on the email. Just look like he was always on the go, 24 7, trying to make it work until the very end. And it didn't happen. And I think that goes a long way. And of course, when it came to, you know, announcing everything and he did it all by the book, very professionally done. Um, as emotional as it was, he kind of removed all the emotion and just kind of tried to be as helpful as possible and put himself forward and whatnot. And also faced it up personally. Didn't avoid people, didn't not come into the office, like was like, you know, available to talk on Slack, available to talk via Zoom, um, available to talk in the office, like just made himself personable, made himself approachable and didn't carry and hide away. The other thing I've seen in this situation, one other place I worked at where it happened, uh, mass layoffs, is the owner was just acting like nothing happened. People were going out and drinking on the company card. He was buying stuff all the time to buying pizza. All the stuff that you'd imagine startup people do. The pizzas, the snacks, the coffee machine stuff, the fruit baskets from that, you know, those companies that come through and bring you fruit boxes, everything per week and whatnot. All these little, you know, extravagances that you would imagine a successful startup should be having or, some, or a startup that has got a lot of funding. And then boom, we get hit over the hammer and saying they're going to have mass layoffs because we can't afford to keep the lights on. And then, oh, also, I can't pay you the end of the month. So, and then I think we ended up having to get the payment, it, uh, you know, from at the end of a employment tribunal or something, which is crazy. And it, again, it doesn't matter because, you know, maybe the first guy or the one that did it most recently, he was prancing around and being stressed out and looking like he was working. It kind of made me feel good because, you know, that's cool, but he could still be doing bad business. I understand, but that those actions do go a long way to kind of give employees, your foot soldiers, a little bit of comfort in knowing that you tried. But that whole just continuing like nothing's happening, jumping into Uber X's and whatnot, and just living the fucking rich life of a really successful startup founder, knowing full well of the pending doom that's a flipping, you know, far out over the flipping horizon that's about to kind of hit us on shore is really despicable so there's no good and bad no good and bad way to do these kind of things you just have to do them and hope people understand and are grown up about it and can kind of bounce back but you know it's pretty it's pretty sketchy out there if people from google are getting let go alphabet spotify i forgot who the other people are there's other places too i forgot which ones especially but it seems like these layoffs are affecting people all over the place of course we saw what happened with twitter going forward which makes me think actually i wonder if a lot of these operators and owners of these companies have seen what elon's done at twitter and how he was able to take them i think at their peak they may have had seven thousand eight thousand employees now they've got a thousand right so he slashed his employee base by like 75 or 70 percent plus absolutely insane but i wonder if a lot of these operators were able to take all their emotion out of it all of their political leanings out of it and the idea that elon musk is incredibly annoying and a bit of an attention seeker remove yourself from it step back a bit and just look at it and think you know what he's actually proved that it's possible to run a company of the scale of an app or the scale of um twitter with only a thousand plus employees the majority of them you know um engineers and whatnot and you'll be able to do a pretty decent job so far, it hasn't imploded on itself, hasn't gone bankrupt, hasn't shut down. Maybe it's on the brink of it, but so far, he's been able to prove that it's able to function day to day, you know, week to week, month to month, year to year. So clearly, there is um, there is some precedent there set. So I wonder if for some of these founders and owners saw what he done and thought, you know what, we should copy this the same thing with our field because, you know, the, the, you can save so much money from salaries alone, so much especially if you fire people across the board and not just in one certain band. There's a lot of money that could be saved and kind of reinvested into really improving the most important thing in any business is obviously the service, app, products, whatever else that you're selling and putting out. There's probably the most important thing to be focusing all your efforts towards. So for everybody out there who is suffering from the mass layoffs, big up yourself, hold in there. You should be fine. You shall be fine.